Hey everyone, my name is Tegan, and welcome back to Sandy Writes. Today we're going to be doing the Your Story tag as a little preparation to count down to my second novel coming out in May 2022. May 17th, I believe, although there may be a little self-publishing issue that means it comes out on the 18th, but we'll see. We'll see. This is the tag that I originally did back in perhaps 2018 when I was talking about this book for the first time. Back then, I don't think I could find the original creator because people don't tag their sources and it's very annoying. And if I can find them this time, I will leave a link in the description, whether that's a blog or a YouTube video, but either way, I will leave a list of the questions. So let's begin. Question number one is tell us about your story. Paper Forest is a story set between a place between life and death, where children and teenagers go when they're kind of dying, kind of dead, but not quite. We have four main characters. We have Oliver, our narrator, August, a little girl called Gracie and a teenage boy called Ansel, and they're all trying to find their way home from this afterlife because their deaths were mostly mistakes and they'd like to go home. Question two is, is this part of Camp NaNoWriMo, NaNoWriMo or a personal project? I believe this started, I think I read the prologue far before everything else. The prologue and the epilogue are pretty much the same chapter. They are the groups of parents, the parents of these children who have died in group therapy, discussing what they think has happened to their children. It's got very sunny all of a sudden. So that prologue was inspired by the concept for My Conquer Romance's fifth album that didn't come out unless it somehow has come out in the time between filming and uploading this. That was originally a personal project because I was so obsessed with that album idea when I first heard about it. Then I think the actual story itself, the part set in the forest, started off as Camp Nano, I think 2017. It must have been 2017. I won an award for this book at the end of 2017. So Camp Nano 2017, and then I've been working on drafts for it for regular Nano. Question three is, tell us about your characters. I'll tell you about, let's say the two main characters. We have our narrator, Oliver, who is our disaster bisexual son. Love my life, so much fun to write, but constantly on like the, ner the edge of a nervous breakdown. Loves his family, really wants to go home, but isn't quite sure why, because his death perhaps was not a mistake. And I think he realises somewhere in his storyline that maybe the forest is better than going home, as much as he does love his family. Our other main character is August. He narrates, I believe, six chapters, but they are mostly flashback scenes, which is also a very fun perspective to play with. He is, again, a disaster. He is our gay son. He is biracial. And um, in short, he is a liar. Which again, so much fun to write about because we didn't know these things about him until I added his six chapters, which I thought was going to be a risk, but I think it has paid off. Question number four is what is your favourite friendship? There's such a small, I was going to say there's a small cast of characters, but we, have them, we are stuck with the main four most of the time and they don't get along. They're not friends by choice. They're just working together because they have to. And there's not really much chance for other friendships throughout the book. So I think my favourite friendships, I guess Oliver and August, and August and his best friend from his flashbacks. Question five, similar to question four, is what is your favourite romance? And again, not much potential for romance. We have one romance between two characters, which I think is the only romance in the book. And because it's romance between teenagers, I wanted them to act like teenagers you know, falling in love in a second because, hey, you're cute and there's no one else here and I guess so, we have nothing to lose anymore. One of those things. But also, they don't remain in love. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be that person. They do have to pay some consequences for their actions. Question six is, what is the saddest scene in your story? I'm going to give you two scenes. The first one is a character death scene in the final third of the book, which is sad because it's a death scene which I think is all I can I can say. I know none of you have read the book, but <laughs> I think that's all I can say. It's kind of a redemption, almost. The other scene that is sad, maybe there's two other ones that really stand out to me, aren't sad in the same way as a death scene. They're sad because there's this very like bittersweet nostalgia and these flashbacks to childhood and it's all these memories. So it's sad in a very bittersweet way. And I think hopefully that's something a lot of people reading it will be able to relate to and will find that sadder than a death scene. I don't remember the chapter title right now, but the scene that I'm thinking about is the stargazing scene and the one that parallels that. Question seven is what is your favourite scene in the story? Um, 
perhaps the stargazing scene, it means a lot to me. And that's a scene I love because I think if I went down the traditional publishing route for this book, it might be a scene that would get cut. It doesn't add much to the plot, but I think, in my opinion, it does a good a good deal of development for characters' relationships. But I'm so emotionally attached to the scene, it means so much to me, the stargazing scene. And again, as a result, the one that parallels that. Question eight is what is your opening scene? Again, two answers. The opening scene to the prologue is the group of adults sat in therapy discussing what has happened to their children. And that also provides a little backstory that the characters themselves don't elaborate on when they are present. The other second, chap second chapter, second opening scene, for the actual first chapter is Oliver waking up in the forest. Not for the first time, I think it's the third time, but finally other people are awake and he's not alone anymore. Question nine is how did this story come about? I think I said earlier, but the concept for My Chemical Romance's fifth album, also the concept for Mariah's Trench's third album, which is called Ever After, it's got a lot of fairy tale influences, it has a forest, beautiful album, beautiful concept, also the music videos and the storyline, the little story in the lyric booklet and all the other videos, incredible, very inspirational. Other inspiration, I kind of nitpicked, I kind of took little bits of the Hansel and Gretel fairy tale. So not enough that I would class this book as an official retelling, but enough that you kind of get what I'm going for, you know? Question 10 is what is the theme of your story? The overall theme, the biggest theme, death, mental health, a few themes of childhood and nostalgia and innocence, but overall it is mostly death and my exploration of the afterlife. Question 11 is what isn't working in your story? I'm trying to have like, I'm trying to flash back to the first time I made this video and what did I say wasn't working in the story because I don't remember. But I think one thing that wasn't working was that we weren't finding out about August's character because he's very secretive and he's a liar. So in my head as I was writing it, I said, like, I know these things, which is why I love this character. But I didn't write it in a way that you would find out about because it's mostly narrated by Oliver in first person. So why would you get inside August's head? And I resolved this by giving August six chapters, but instead of him narrating what's going on at the moment, they're all flashbacks. So again, it's giving you these hints, but it's still, it's still clinging on to his secrets. Question 12 is what is one thing you love about your story? I think the biggest thing I love is that it is exactly what I wanted it to be when I started writing it back in 2017, five years ago, when I was a little baby 16 year old. It is com it's somehow, it is exactly what I envisioned all those years ago. It's taken me a long time to get there, but I'm so proud. And what I love is that this is, this is the book. And finally, question 13 is, do you plan to publish? Yes. I'm going down a self-publishing route for a few reasons. First of all, I don't think I'm ready for traditional publishing. If I was ready, I don't think I have the time in my life and what other things I want to do with my life to make traditional publishing my career with like timelines and schedules and things like that. So what I love about self-publishing is I can do it whenever I want. And also I have full control over every stage of the process. Like I get to pick my title. I know a lot of authors don't get to do that. And I get to pick my cover and what the insides look like and what scenes stay and all those things. I love every process of that part of the self-publishing process. I know a lot of indie authors and self-published authors don't, but I really love having more control. So that's all the questions for your story tag. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that I will get to see you next time and welcome you back to the paper for us. Bye.